message today is all the rage. Let's look at Psalm 46 together. You know what would be a lot of fun is if you all got back up on your feet while I read this. It was so much fun. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Amen. You may be seated. We are absolutely seeing a lot of new people in and out in this church. And so once again, welcome to Castle. If you've not been here before, you're just getting to know us. Uh, we're, we're really grateful that you've chosen to be here on this Sunday to worship. We know that God is moving. We know that God is faithful. We know that Jesus, who died on the cross, is now alive and that he lives in us. And I called this message today, All the Rage, you know, all the rage can be a trend, but you know what's trending, it seems? The trend is rage itself. When you look around the world and you think about all the chaos, it's a pretty good description. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read scripture, I read through and I think, oh, this is what it does for me. Lord, thank you that you just know. Just knowing that he knows. You know, like you want to be understood, God understands. And so we see that Division seems to be all the rage. Fighting, quarrels seems to be all the rage. The divisions even in church seem to be all the rage. The way that people interact with each other. And these are incredible times. But guess what? God has encouragement for us in the middle of all the chaos. He has encouragement for us in the middle of all the rage. And I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you with God's word. You know, when people look at what's happening in the Middle East or read the, read the news or follow along with the news, it seems like every week there's something else. I don't know about you, but how many of us kind of get, like your nerves can almost be on edge. You know, one more problem or one more situation. And the world seems really, really tenuous and very, very fragile. But let me just say right away, Jesus is none of that. Jesus is firm and he's the foundation. And we've got to go to him. In fact, if... If you're kind of looking through, and I know in Christian culture, a lot of people start running to what's the prophecy for this season and all of that, and I'm not stopping you from doing it, but I want to say to you that there is some absolutely tried and true what you can do with your relationship with Jesus when all the rage is the rage. There's things that you can do in your life, and once again, I find myself back in the Psalms, and I am encouraged in this particular chapter and in the first verse of this chapter, it says that Jesus, or our Lord, he is always ready to help in times of trouble. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Other versions of this will say ever-present. He's ever-present in times of trouble. Other versions beyond that will say very present. As a, as a journalist in my old career, every editor had their pet peeves. And one of my pet peeves was, you know, you don't need to use the word very. It's too vague. Don't tell me you're very happy. Say something about it. Don't be more specific. When Jesus is saying in this word very, there's nothing vague about it. He's actually saying with a, with a passion, 
with a passion, he is always present. When I go to parties, I'm the type, by the end of the party, I like to just sneak out so nobody knows I'm present. You, you look up and I'm already driving home. <laughs> I'm married to somebody who feels the opposite of that. You knew I was going to do that. I don't want to do that to you, Luis, but I'm going to tease you now right in front of everybody. We went to a baby shower once and recently, and I was like, she's saying goodbye to so many people. I thought it was maybe our baby shower. I know we're not having more kids. What's going on here? But when I leave a party, I like to sneak out. Jesus is saying, there's nothing sneaky about what I'm trying to do in your life. I'm here. And I'm here. And I'm always present. And if you want a word for these times and these moments of rage that are affecting our nation and our world, if you want a word, here's the simple word I got for you. You have a direct line to Jesus Christ. You've got a direct line to go straight to Jesus to get what you need in your relationship for every season. In fact, I've been thinking a lot about the story of David, a particular story of David. There's this battle where David takes his men and he goes and he fights. And while he's fighting this other problem and they win in this other battle, Meanwhile, another enemy snuck into the camp and burned down the camp and took all the women and children. And so by the time David and his men returned, they found out that they had been ambushed and that there was another problem that they never expected. We always will find times in our lives where we're fighting one battle, there could be a whole other battle that's taken place and affect us when we're not even expecting it. Is that true? And so David comes back. Oh, this is the thing that's been on my heart. David comes back, and the men he's with, listen to this, the men he's with who had just won a victory with him on the battlefield, they turn to David, and they, he starts hearing them say things like, maybe we should stone him. Maybe we should kill him. They start taking their bitterness. This is a pattern you got to watch out for in your personal life and in the world. They took their bitterness they turn their bitterness into rage, and they turn their rage into a justification to go and get the innocent. And David wasn't guilty of anything that happened while he was away, except for there's some theories that maybe he didn't take enough precautions. But let me point to you to what he actually did in that moment that encourages me. David, when he got back, he hears the people he just fought with. He was just on the battlefield with them. And they were looking to him. And now they want to kill him. David was about as low as you could possibly get. But you know what the Bible says he did that you need to do in this day of rage? The Bible says that he did this. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And I want you to understand that if you're waiting on other people to encourage you and strengthen you, sometimes your wait is going to be longer than what your need is. And you need to learn that you have a direct line to Jesus Christ, who is what? Sometimes present? Sneaking out of the party? No. He is always present. He is very present. And church, you need to turn to him as your direct line of hope in your life. Some of you grew up in a church culture where you were surrounded by prophecy this and prophecy that. Some of you are waiting for a personal word in your life. You just wish somebody would stop by and just give you that word from God because we all come to crossroads in our lives where it would be really nice if somebody just coached us through and mentored us through to the next stage. And I thank God for mentors. I thank God for brothers and sisters that are here at this church. I thank God for people who can speak a word, but they're not always there right by your hip when you need God to speak to you directly. And this church, we need to mature in this part of our relationship with Jesus. We need to be able to step back onto this battlefield know we're maybe being even unfairly treated, knowing that our crowd maybe dwindled a little bit more, and you look around and you think, I don't got as many people as I used to. 
But what you do have always is you have Jesus in your life. And sometimes you need to prophesy to yourself. I, I can say to myself, a year from now, you're going to look back and see all that God has done. How many people can prophesy that to themselves? Sometimes you need to give yourself an assurance. God said he will never leave me nor forsake me. Can we say amen to that? Sometimes when you're feeling weak and your faith feels fragile and everybody's trying to go back to a pre-COVID life, which ain't ever going to happen in church world. Remember during COVID, we all said, we don't want church to be this way ever again. It's a whole new time. And then new time came, and it meant tough times. But now is the time for some spirit-led Christians who know how to encourage themselves in the Lord, who could go on a drive in the back roads of these streets here and put on a song that we just sang, sang together, I trust in Jesus. And you encourage yourself in the Lord. That's a superpower. Can I hear you say amen to that? When you learn to prophesy to yourself, when you learn to take the promises of God and say, Lord, these are, this is what your word says. I'm going to stand on the word of God. And you know what? We're never as alone as we think we are. So I'm not saying that we're just on this road alone. Look around. We're all together. Amen? We're a church family coming in Sunday after Sunday. But some of you, when we break the huddle and we go out into the world and it's Monday morning and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and by Thursday you're thinking my job is such and such and I don't understand about these bills and this situation's in my life and what's really happening in this world full of rage and the, the things are hitting you over and over again. Come on, church, you definitely, absolutely need to do what David did. You need to step away and say, I have always present with me, somebody I can turn to in times of trouble. And if I need to do it because nobody else is, because listen, sometimes you're waiting on something that's never going to come your way. You're waiting on something, someone else externally to give you what you've already got in Jesus yourself. And you can, amen, you can on Monday morning when there's no church worship and there's no church stuff going on and there's no picnics. How many people are going to the picnic after the service? If you're not registered, you're welcome to come with us and join us at the picnic at Mohegan Park. Alex said if you haven't registered, he, you can take his food. You didn't say that, bro? You're not that Christian? You're not that Christian. You can take my... <laughs> when all that is away, I, I would love to see my brothers and sisters just know how to encourage themselves in the Lord. Can you all say a big amen? I'll move on if you do. This is the word that I believe Jesus would give us in the midst of all the rage. To learn how to do these things to ourselves that we need. It's Jesus himself saying, I am an ever-present help in the day of trouble. I am your God. I provide. I take care of you. I see your pain. I see your agony, I see your struggles, I see your doubts, and I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand with you. And that's the psalmist saying, I've got somebody I can turn to. Do you understand how many times in Scripture it says, I've got a fortress, I've got a refuge, I've got a place. Physically, there might be things going on, but spiritually, you can't touch me when I'm in the presence of God spiritually, I know a place that I can go to and be encouraged in the Lord. And though none go with me, still, I will follow. Though none go with me, though the crowd makes it popular to be full of division, I will still follow by the grace of God, by knowing that I can rely on him and in myself, there is no good thing. But in Christ, I have everything I need to overcome. So you have a direct line to Jesus in these last days, whatever it is exactly that is unfolding around the world, would you please remember this? 
that he is our ever-present help in a day of trouble. It also made me think, as we take this chapter and we look at uh, another section of story, just as a quick reminder here, there is the story of when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration, it's called. And as Jesus is going up the mountain to pray, to pray, to commune with the Father, which is what we should do, to talk to him, to tell him our burdens, to, to do that. Well, in the middle of it, it says, the Bible says that Jesus, as he was praying and the disciples got sleepy and began to just fall asleep, which I can relate more to than what was happening with Jesus. And Jesus is praying, and it says his face began to shine, and his clothes were so radiant, it was like lightning, the way that it was so radiant. And when Peter starts to come to, he sees that Jesus is having a full-blown conversation with people who had gone on before him, and that was Elijah and Moses. Wow, what a conversation. Elijah the prophet, and Moses the one who led him out of the wilderness. And the Bible says that in this conversation, they were talking about Jesus' departure. If ever there was a euphemism for his death, but they described it as his departure. And the reason why they described it as they were having this conversation as a departure is because it's the same word that's used when Moses led the people through the Exodus, leading people out of the control of Pharaoh and into the freedom of a new life. And so when Jesus was talking about his upcoming death, crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection, his departure with Elijah and Moses, he was saying this is going to be an exodus for anybody who puts their trust in Jesus Christ. They are going to be set free and let out of the prison of their own sin and out of their own control. Here's the part of the story that made me think of our church and the world that we live in. It says Peter, who was sleepy, began to say, let's do some stuff. We got something pretty crazy going on here. Let's build a tent for Elijah, a tent for Moses, and let's do all these different things and make this a moment. And the cloud comes, and God says to him, no, actually, just look at my son. And by the time they focus on the son, Elijah, Elijah and Moses are gone. It's just Jesus. In parentheses, as Peter is talking, the Bible says, and he didn't understand what he was talking about. If that ain't a message to sometimes us as Christians, when we're reacting to the most impressing things of this world, can I just encourage you, get with Jesus and not get with your own opinions. Because sometimes you're just not going to know and understand what you're talking about. Because even in the moment... Peter was looking at this incredible thing unfold and he misinterpreted the actual unfolding of the events and God needed to say to him, Peter, stop with all the Elijah and Moses tent making and just look at my son Jesus. Come on, church. You need to be careful about all the misinterpretations and all the opinions. Everybody's got a hot take on whatever else is happening in the world. The best thing that we can do as Christians is say, okay, Okay, I'm going to put my eyes on Jesus Christ. And you know what? You know what his departure means? If you want to know something about what's going to happen, it means he's also going to return one day. Can I hear a big amen to that? One day Jesus is coming back. One day he will return. It's a promise. I want us to be ready. How many people want to be ready for when Jesus returns? I want to be ready. And I want to go to him as my ever-present help in a time of trouble. I don't want to be doing this, this thing and that thing and being preoccupied with this or that and waiting on encouragement I might not ever get. I just want to be with Jesus. I want to do what he's called me to do. I want to follow him closer. And I am encouraging you, church, to put your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says it's the blessed hope of his return. It's a return that's marked Forget about all the other noise. When Jesus comes back, it's a time of restoration. It's a time of peace. It's a time where the Bible says he causes wars to end. There's only one who will ever be able to end all the war wars on this earth. The wars, the bloodshed that began with Cain and Abel, the bloodshed that we see all the way up until these days, there's going to be a king of kings who returns and puts an end to all the wars and establishes peace like only he can. And so 
we also want to be pressing in in an age of extremism, in an age of just crazy talk. We got to hear the voice of Jesus. That's what I was saying to you this last couple of weeks. It's Jairus going back to his house and the servant from the household running out to Jairus and saying, it's too late. Your daughter's dead. Don't even bother the master. But Jesus quickly turned to Jairus and said, don't listen to any of that because I'm still going to your house and I'm still going to heal because when I say I'm coming, I'm coming. Amen. When I say I'm going to heal, he's going to heal. Amen. When he's got a victory for you, it doesn't really matter what all the other people say in this world. All you need is one approval. It's God's. And when he says amen, we say amen too. And we see God move in the way that only he can move. And to be mature Christians in these days when it's all the rage is to be turning to him. I would also encourage you to develop a stillness. Here's the other verse. It says to be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still in its original meaning means to let go. It means to surrender. How many surrendered Christians do we have in this place? Not my will, but may your will be done. How many Christians do we have in this place who are saying, I'll take the lead, Lord, and I'll let you know how I'm doing? We need to let the Lord take the lead and let him know, let him tell us how we're doing. And so we need to develop in these last days a stillness before God. Here's, here we're, here's how it should sound to you about be still. I was having a conversation after church with, a, with somebody here, and the mother, all of a sudden, her little toddler, she realizes making a beeline for that door. And that door is very close to that road. And so Mama Bear kicked off her shoes and ran down that aisle and shouted to her son, Stop! You're going the wrong direction. And when Jesus is saying to us to be still, it's like a parent to a child who's thrown those tantrums, and they, they don't know how to deal with all the stuff that's going on. They're not mature enough. And Jesus would say to us, in our lack of maturity in these days, you know, it's not about another Facebook post that says, if you don't share this, Jesus is going to be ashamed of you too. It's not about just scrolling again and being fed by a hundred things online and thinking you're being fed by Jesus when you're actually not. It's, being, it's hearing Jesus say to your spirit, be still. Why don't you let go of your control? Why don't you surrender? Why don't you, you know that part of you that some of you understand what it's like to want to have control and you don't have control and it just, just eats you up inside. I remember going to uh, Juarez in Mexico once on one of our church trips and that's one of the most dangerous cities in the world and as we crossed the border and the woman was taking us across the border and hosting us, she said, oh, I don't think my parents would want me to be here. I said, why is that? And she said, well, because it's probably too dangerous for us. And I said, okay, can you turn the car around? especially when she went down the wrong way on a one way. I said, it's time to go back. But I could tell you I was feeling like this inside, smiling, but on, on the inside. And some of us are smiling, not, smiling on the outside, but on the inside. We just want control. We just want, this world is all up and down. We want control. We want control. We're, we're not surrendering our control to the one who can lead us through, and that's only Jesus. Amen? It's letting go of the things that we're trying to hang on to. And it says, be still and know that he is God. Can I remind you one of the most basic things about being here as a church family is that we have the most incredible opportunity to know who Jesus is. Can I hear you all say a big amen to that? It'll encourage me. Because that's really what we're here for is we get to know who Jesus is. Now, what did that child do when, when the mother said, stop, be still? The child got to know something about the parent. The child got to know that this parent is a place of safety. The child got to know that the parent was looking out after the child's good for the sake of his own peace and stability. 
when you get to know God, you understand that he is your peace and he is your security and he is your boundary. And he says, don't go there because it's better for you to stay right here where I am an always present in times of trouble. You're not going to be able to make it too far in your Christian walk if you're all hoping for a 20-minute message to get you through the times that we're living in. What we need is some mature Christians who say, I know how to encourage myself. Can the musicians come forward and the singers? We need some mature Christians. Listen, it's time to mature in our lives. Amen? It's time to mature. It's time to mature. It's time to say, Lord, I'm feeling a certain type of way. And I need you to minister to me in this moment. I just got blindsided by an attack over here. I got blindsided by an attack over here while I was fighting over here. And now this is happening. And Lord, I feel like there's, there's a lot of people making a lot of noise towards me, but actually what I need is to hear from you. Hey, Castle Church, you have a direct line to Jesus. Amen. Can we stand on our feet? We have a direct line to who Jesus is. In... Church is supposed to be a place of where we can wrestle with things. We can ask questions. We can even express doubts sometimes as Christians. But can I encourage you not to take the off-ramp and to stay strong in your faith? Amen? And when it's popular to be full of opinions but not full of Jesus, when it's popular to be part of the noise, when it's popular to be part of the rage, Christians need to do the unpopular thing. And the unpopular thing is to turn to him for all that we need in this day and age. Amen? Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray. I pray for this church. I pray, Lord, that there would be a maturing in individuals here who would get a hold of your word as they look around and hear this story and that story. And we're often surrounded by people who also don't know what they're saying. But, Lord, I pray that we would turn to you in these days and that we would get to know you, that we would hear the shout, be still, and we would be still. I pray for those who are all tightened up, worried about control of things that they cannot control, I pray they would surrender them to you. Is that your prayer too? That you would surrender, surrender in this moment, surrender your big ideas to who God is, surrender your anxieties and surrender your distresses to him. And there's lots of ways to get the help we need, but I want to remind you that the help we really need comes from Jesus himself. And so may you be aware, Lord, may we be aware of your presence in our lives, in our apartments, in our drives, in our homes, on the phone, you're ever present, and I pray we'd get stronger because of it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing, sir. this is how we fight our battles, right? So it's the perfect, they switched up the song, it's the perfect song for the moment we have.
This is how 